3D Swans Acrylic Nailer Tutorial, collaboration with Black Swan Beauty by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit special. I'm doing a collaboration with Helen from Black Swan Beauty and we were both competing in NTNA together and we became friends and so we decided to do this and we both have animal themed channel names so we decided to swap. So she did a zebra themed design and I did a swan themed design and we each did five nails with some 3D. I hope you guys like both mine and hers. If you've never watched her videos before, I highly recommend that you go check out her channel. I'll put a link to her channel in the description box below. So go head over there and say hi to her as well. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye. Begin with one coat of gray gel polish over the nails. If they don't have, if the gray gel polish you're using isn't very opaque, you may wanna do two or three coats or whatever's required. But then I'm going to lighten the top of the nail with a gradient to a pale aqua to give it kind of a sky type look. So I just applied that light color at the tip or at the cuticle zone of the nail and then I really gently with a brush just whipped back and forth to smooth that out and then I'm going to create the water line with a white gel polish gradient so I'm going to just paint that white line and then do the same thing with the brush just fly back and forth across the nail to blend it out fairly well so I do kind of want a bit of a brush stroke in this final finish because I want it to look almost like a watercolor painting or something of that nature just a really beautiful very smooth look and so then I'm going to add a little bit of a dark teal at the tip. So now with an olive green, I'm going to start blocking in the reflections for the cattails. And so when you're thinking of something, it's really weird to do this reflection because typically when I'm painting something, I would start with the item that creates the reflection and then create the reflection. But for whatever reason, I decided to do this the other way. So I have those couple reflections coming down and just every once in a while, basically you're just gonna be filling in a little bit of this olive green. So start with some vertical yeah, start with vertical lines coming down and then you're going to brush them back and forth a couple times to create some horizontal streaks through them. After you have those done, just go through and right along the water line add a couple really fine little lines coming up from that white line to create some cattails that are on the horizon. You don't have to add too many. You don't want it to be a steady line of cattails. You want it to just be a couple here and there to break up just that straight, straight line and give the background of the design a bit more interest. So just a couple little dots here and there even would work if you don't want to do the full line of cattails or the full lines coming up. If you really just want to do like a, you know, dot of the dark green or the olive green every once in a while, that would do it too. So I'm just going to add a couple of those on each nail. Like I said, not filling it in into a straight, straight line to create a solid line of cattails, but just a couple. And now still using my olive green, I'm going to be adding the cattails that are creating those reflections. So I've got three different patches of cattails that I painted. And for this first one, don't fill in completely with the olive green lines because you're going to be using a couple different shades of green. So after you have the basics in there and kind of have the space for them, then go in with a brighter shade of green, more of like a grass green, and fill in the, a couple more lines of the cattails. And some of them can be bent over. They don't all have to be stick straight. So have a little bit of fun with it, play around with it. Kind of reminds me of painting bamboo too. So you don't have to use completely straight lines or really stress yourself out too too much and then I'm going to take a very very dark almost black green and add just a little bit of shading to the base of the cattails kind of define between the water line and where the cattails are and give them a bit more of a yep this is water this is the reflection and this is the actual cattails just clean that up a little bit visually I know it's really hard to see detail, especially in a painting that has this glossy sheen on it, but once they do get matte top coated, which you'll see in a moment, they really kind of smooth out and the whole design comes to life. And I'm going to be adding the little tips of the cattails with a dark purpley brown. And the reason I used a purple tone brown instead of a various color is because the purple and the green look so nice together that even though you can't necessarily tell that it's purple, the fact that it does have that purple hue to it brings out the green a little more. I'm gonna add a couple more white streaks for water highlights, especially right at the base of the cattails between them and the reflections. And then on the thumbnail, I'm going to be painting a white swan with gel paint. So I'm going to start with the head and then that long, gorgeous neck, and then add the body of the swan, which you don't see very much swan body because they are swimming. And so the majority of the swan is underwater. So you're just going to do the little top of the body of the swan. And painting this swan with the white gel paint or white gel polish, if you have one that is opaque enough, Madame Glam's would definitely be opaque enough if you are looking for a brand recommendation. But you're just going to paint that first basic step and then cure it. 
and then go through and add some more details. So with black gel paint, I'm going to be adding the beak of my swan, and then I'm going to do a couple outlines on the swan, and I don't want my outlines to look very defined in the end, so with this first little bit of outlining, I'm using just the tiniest amount of gel paint possible, and then I'm going to go through and with a brush that has just a little bit of a gel cleanser on it, I'm going to start smoothing out those lines. If you don't want to use a gel cleanser, because maybe you don't want it on your brush or something, use just a clear gel, either base coat or top coat, and that will help blend out those lines too. And it's just kind of personal preference. The application is slightly different and it feels a little different. So whatever you're used to using to blend out color with when you're using gel, go ahead and do what you're accustomed to. And blend out that black. As you can see, it's getting some really nice gradations of gray throughout and it looks really soft. Like I said, I wanted this background to look like a watercolor painting. Something that, <laughs> this is going to sound kind of crazy, but something that you might expect to see in a doctor's office. Just a really calm painting, <laughs> just to kind of make you get into that relaxed state of mind. And then I'm going to add a touch of yellow on the beak of my, of my swan. A little bit more black and a couple shadows beneath my swan with both black and white. Running that color through to create some really nice little shadows. I love painting water. I know I've said this a bunch of different times and you're going to hear me say it again, but I absolutely love painting water. And so then I'm going to be applying a layer of matte gel top coat over these nails. And because we're painting or applying top coat over a design that has a bit of a texture to it, just from the various layers of gel color, you're going to want to float the gel top coat over the top of it. So you apply a slightly thicker layer than you may normally. Be careful. It's not too much that it would say pool on the nail somewhere or drip off. You definitely don't want that much, but just a little bit of a fuller layer of gel top coat and then leave it for a second it'll self level in really like 10 seconds it'll self level perfectly and then when you put it in the lamp it'll cure to a very smooth finish and you won't be able to see any of that lumpy bumpiness from all of those layers of gel color that are underneath so definitely smooth out the surface like so. And then after that's cured, we can start building up our 3D swans. And I am pretty much only showing you guys the black swan because it is essentially the same process for the white swan, just opposite because they're facing each other. So to start your swans, you're going to want to begin with the color that you're using, obviously black or white, and then take and just build up the base of your swan. This part here is actually quite thin. There's not too much 3D texture on it or anything like that. Nothing too fun yet, but this is the basis of what your swan is built off of. So make sure that you do sculpt this with the right proportions in mind. Definitely have photos next to you. Anytime that I'm working on a project like this, I usually have easily five to 20 photos that I work off of. And I will um, put a link to a video that I used to show how I plan a design on my art channel or how I plan a painting on my art channel. It's the same basic principle. So if you guys are curious on how I do that kind of thing, I can definitely link that video over. But when you're working on something, have a photo next to you. I always have, I usually have my nail reference photos on my phone because you're working on something small, you can look at something small, at least if you're me. And you have it next to where you're working so that your eyes can very quickly dart back and forth as you're working so that you don't have to stop and go, oh, was this the right shape? Especially when you're working with something like acrylic that sets up like that, you have to be able to answer those questions of does this look right in an instant? So have your reference photos close by, keep them handy. And so then after you have that basic swan shape done, no beak yet, as you can see, then I'm going to be sculpting all kinds of little wing feathers on my nail from backing next to it. And to sculpt these little wing feathers, once again, they're very, very thin. So when you go to start working on them later, they'll be delicate, but just a couple different lengths, but almost like elongated teardrop shapes is what you need to do. And then to finish off the beak or the bill of your swan, you're going to use some red for that. And then on your white swan, use orange like you did for the hand painted one. And now after they're all done, you can attach the swans with your preferred method, either acrylic, jewelry gel, builder gel, nail glue, whatever you wanna use. And so you're just going to put a little bit of whatever product it is. I'm using some jewelry gel. I honestly thought that was gonna be the easiest route to take. Uh, it's the first time I ever used it for attaching something like this, and it really wasn't. Uh, for whatever reason, it didn't seem to want to cure quite as fast. So I probably would recommend maybe using a builder gel instead. But so attach your swans to the nail. And then after that, dip your little feathers into either nail glue or a gel product and then attach them. If you're using nail glue, you are going to have to hold them until they set up individually. If you're using something like the jewelry gel or my recommended option would be builder gel then you can flash cure it if you have something like a flash cure flashlight like i have that i'm using here that makes it super quick and easy if you don't have such a device then you are going to have to have your lamp handy and pop it in and out of a lamp but if you have one of those little portable travel lamps i know i've got a bunch of them that are stowed away in a drawer that 
or like a two finger lamp or something i know that there's some that are really small that a lot of companies have then you can use those as well just like a flash cure flashlight they have the same basic concept to them small portable easy to hold click it on click it off so get all those little feathers attached and as you're attaching them further and further towards the front of the bird tip them up farther and farther they're never going to be perpendicular to the to the swan but they're going to probably be at a solid 60 degree angle i don't know if you guys are mathematically inclined like i am then you'll be able to hopefully visualize those angles but um more than 45 degrees so you want it to be tipped up quite far and then fill in behind your swans with some clear acrylic to make sure that they are nice and strong and not going to pop off and then after we have that i'm going to use the same color of gray that i used as my base coat color which you see very little of at this point in that actual background but i'm going to use that base coat color and i'm going to be adding some highlights on my black swan with that since this is about a medium gray it does highlight the black quite well and just a little bit on the tips of those feathers that we just attached and then a little bit on the front of the swan's neck and a little bit on the head just to make it so it's not quite so black Whenever I do something, an animal that's black, like a black cat, which I do all the time because I love black cats for Halloween, you definitely want to highlight them and quite a bit to, because otherwise, especially in photos, it's really hard to see the detail and the texture of them because the camera just doesn't want to pick it up. So definitely for the black swan, add those highlights, very important. And then on the white swan, I'm going to use that exact same color and I'm going to be adding some shadows on it. So at the base of the feathers instead of at the tips. I'm going to use some red gel paint to brighten up my black swan's beak. And then on my orange beak, I'm not going to do too much because that was bright enough already. But if you, if it wasn't, depending on what products you're using, you may want to just intensify it. I wanted those beaks to be very vibrant and very um, intense and easy to see in color so that you could definitely see, especially since they're kind of off the nail, just make them a little bit more visually appealing. Add some white highlights to my white swan to brighten up some of the tips of those wings. And then on the white swan, you do want to add some black details on the facial features, a little bit on the beak. And then continue that black onto where the eye would be. And then you're going to take and add a little bit of white to your swan's eyes on both the black and the white swan to give them a bit of a reflection. And then apply a super light layer of matte gel top coat over the swans so that you don't flood the 3D, but so that they are nice and secure with their non-stickiness. And then on the three swan nails, both, so the three, the one that has the flat swan and then the two that are 3D, then you're going to just apply a little bit of that jewelry gel along one corner along the cuticle zone and then take and apply a series of rhinestones and caviar beads so i wanted to keep with sort of an elegant tone to this set when i always think that adding a couple caviar beads between the rhinestones intensifies the elegance and the finishing touches of a row of crystals like that so after you have those little rhinestones placed and i put the largest one in what i like to think of as the upper corner of the nail and then i'm going to put between each rhinestone a caviar bead a little silver caviar bead you don't want to overdo it and like completely line them because that almost seems to be doing too much but if you just do one caviar bead between each rhinestone it looks like they have the prongs like it's a piece of jewelry and those are the prongs that are holding the stone in place and it just adds a little something extra that your eye almost doesn't see but it seems to just finish off the row so I'm going to do that to the first one and then go through and do the other ones. The great thing with using a jewelry gel that's intended to be attaching crystals and rhinestones and such is that in this particular circumstance, it holds them in place so that you can do them on all of the nails without worrying about carrying each one individually or worrying about them moving around because it'll just keep them exactly where you place them. So if you are somebody that likes to do a whole hand at a time and then go back and cure it just once you can definitely do that when you're using jewelry gel because it's not going to slide around on you at all it keeps things exactly where you put them and then after that final cure this set is done i am so in love with it and i am so impressed with helen's set i don't know if you guys noticed but i really like zebras so anytime i see something with zebra print i instantly fall in love with it and her set was absolutely no exception it's got rainbowness and zebra print and the cutest little zeta recreation i've ever seen if nobody really knows this but i call my little zebra cartoon zeta and it's just it's so adorable i can't even get over it when she sent me the picture initially i 
like my jaw hit the floor i just think it is so adorable and it's hot pink too you know who could go wrong with that plus hers has some sparkle on it too i absolutely love them so definitely like i said before check out her videos she posts fairly often like i do and she's definitely a force to be reckoned with in the nail world so go say hi to her if you don't already follow her and if you want to do a recreation definitely take me on facebook or instagram i'd love to see them and i'll see you next time bye